Thank you very much. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, I come before you because our human commonwealth is once again in a state of anxiety and turmoil. Urgent issues confront us. The first proposition I place before you is that only through the United Nations organization and its truly democratic processes can humanity make real and universal progress toward the goal of peace with justice. Therefore, I believe that to support the United Nations organization and its properly constituted mechanisms and its elected officers is the road of greatest promise in peaceful progress. To attempt to hinder or stultify the United Nations or to deprecate its importance is to contribute to world unrest and indeed to incite the crises that from time to time so disturb all men. The United States stands squarely and unequivocally in support of the United Nations and those acting under its mandate in the interest of peace. In response to the call of the Republic of the Congo, the United Nations, under its outstanding Secretary General, has recently mounted a large-scale effort to provide that new republic with help. That effort has been flagrantly attacked by a few nations which wish to prolong strife in the Congo for their own purpose. The criticism directed by these nations against the Secretary from the United Nations is nothing less than a direct attack upon the United States, it, the United Nations itself. In my opinion, he, the Secretary General, has earned the support and the gratitude of every peace-loving nation. The people of the Congo are entitled to build up their country in peace and freedom. It is imperative that the international community protect the newly emerging nations of Africa from outside pressures that threaten their independence and their sovereign rights. To this end, I propose a program which contains five major elements. Non-interference in the African countries' internal affairs, help in assuring their security without wasteful and dangerous competition in armament, emergency aid to the Congo, international assistance in shaping long-term African development programs, United Nations aid for education. Such a program could go far to assure the African countries the clear chance that the freedom, domestic tran tranquility, and progress they deserve. Agreement on these proposals would enable future generations to find peaceful and scientific progress, not another fearful de Today, I solemnly declare on behalf of the United States that we are prepared to submit to any international inspection, provided only that it is effective and truly reciprocal. This step we will take willingly as an earnest of our determination to uphold the preamble of the United Nations Charter, which says its purpose is to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind. A basic fact today of all change in the domain of international affairs is the need to forge the bonds and build a structure of a true world community. The United Nations is available to mankind to help it create just such a community. It has accomplished what no nation, singly, or any limited group of nations could have accomplished. It has become the forum of all people and the structure about which they can center their joint endeavors to create a better future for our world. We must guard jealously against those who in alternating moods look upon the United Nations as an instrument for use or abuse. The United Nations was not conceived as an Olympian organ to amplify the propaganda tunes of individual nations. The generating force behind a successful United Nations must be the noble idea that a true international community 
can build a peace with justice if only people will work together patiently in an atmosphere of open trust. Opposed to the idea of two hostile, embittered worlds in, perfect, in perpetual conflict, we envisage a single world community as yet unrealized, but advancing steadily toward fulfillment through our plans, our efforts, and our collective ideas. Thus we see as our goal, not a super state above nations, but a world community embracing them all, rooted in law and justice, and enhancing the potentialities and common purposes of all people. As we enter the decades of the 1960s, let us launch a renewed effort to strengthen this international community, to forge new bonds between its members in undertaking new ventures on behalf of all mankind. As we take up this task, let us not delude ourselves that the absence of war alone is a sufficient basis for a peaceful world. I repeat, we must also build a world of justice under law, and we must overcome poverty, illiteracy, and disease. We of the United States will join with you in making a mounting effort to build a structure of true peace, a peace in which all peoples may progress constantly to higher levels of human achievement. The means are at hand. We have but to use them with the wisdom and energy worthy of our cause. I commend this great task to your heart, to your minds, and to your willing hands. Let us go forward together, leaving none behind. Thank you, and God bless you.